Today on the Topping Show, Caitlin Clark is off Team USA. Kamala Harris beat Trump tweet is ratioed. Buying clip of Trump gets mixed results. Walmart is replacing their paper labels with screens. Marshalls and TG Maxx to have their employees wear body cams. Nissan kills gas engine investment. California AutoZone is robbed by a mob. Over $11,000 just vanishes. And Kia to recall 460,000 of their SUVs over a fire risk. All of that and much, much more on the Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of the Topping Show is proudly sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added reseller and services company with a special proficiency in IT security. Heck, I see their founder at least twice a day. I gotta say he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's the joke. If you're an IT leader or a business owner, you can reach out to the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button and tell your friends, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, going over to the business part of the podcast, you have Walmart replacing their paper labels with screens. The price point finally got down where it makes sense. And I subsequently also think the cost of labor has been just skyrocketing way too much in the United States. Now, these screens, I'll go ahead and I'll actually throw it on the screen. Probably not really intended, but these came about a couple years ago. Anecdotally speaking, one of the best use cases in the great state, or some might say the country of Texas, or properly pronounced Texas, would be Nebraska Furniture Mart where all of their accessories and all the things they have for sale there, instead of having a paper price tag, which again, takes time to print, takes money to print, and you have to have an employee actually you know, place it on stuff. Well, they'd have the digital ones, which them it's a feat of engineering. They also use technologies like Ruben Networks, just look at the ceiling, it's not prepared to acknowledge. And they have an instance where they have the dwell time. So if you stand in front of an object in front of Nebraska's Furniture Mart, the, the IT staff, or rather more, more accurately, the company knows how long you stand there, if you walk away, then you walk back, for you, the price actually will change. I'm not saying this will happen 100% of the time. I'm saying they have the technological capabilities, and it's in part because of those screens that you just change that price point. Now, this is first brought to us thanks to Reuters, and then they say, quote, Walmart replaced paper shelf labels with digital print screens at 2,300 stores. Now, I at the, just reading this at the first note, and if you're watching the show, maybe you'll appreciate my little background behind me. The sign that I recently got was the Kmart sign, and it's actually exactly what they looks like in the picture here. Well, that's where they would actually flip the old numbers manually, made out of, well, in this case, that's plastic or plastic if you feel so fancy. And in the Reuters article, it's actually showing an end label with the Walmart prices. And I thought that was going to be the first one. It's actually down to gum, which is astronomical. My local Walmart, again, Anadoli over in Texas, they already did that for all of them. So it's not just the items that are larger, more durable, where that price point would buy, yeah, you can maybe justify that little, little screen because again, it's a t-shirt, it's gonna be more revenue, more profit than a pack of gum. It's down to the pack of gum, which is also a technological night, well, you have the staff, it's not nightmares, pretty eloquent, it all works together nicely, but imagine the logistics of having every product at Walmart have one of those little digital screens. That's a lot of devices. Their network is pretty robust to say the least, their IT network, I should be specific. So it's not just the end caps in this picture. Again, this is the end cap, just like the little Kmart sign I have here. That is where you just have it at the end of the aisle or also buy a specific like bin of stuff. It's down to the gum. So I can't mention how many specific little screens are in these stores. What would that be? Maybe certainly more than a thousand. I mean, we're talking five, 10,000 items. Man, that's astronomical. Now, of course, the, of course, the big upside is they're going to save a lot of time and money because the employees no longer, no longer actually have to print these out, put them on there. And one of the biggest issues with IT is the human error. It's one of the reasons why so many companies are vulnerably attacked in terms of cybersecurity being, you know, bad guys getting in. More often than not, it's just social engineering and the human error is all, all too often prevalent in those situations. Imagine that Walmart, an employee accidentally prints out the wrong price tag. Well, it's there on the shelf. The manager is probably, you know, they might lose money. The margins are pretty thin, especially for groceries. You're talking 2% profit. Well, the company's going to honor that. And in that case, they've lost money. So you have that human error. Then you have the prices not aligning with the products. Maybe it should be won over. Customers get irate. I mean, this is going to save them a lot of time and money long term. Now, this is by uh, Sridhar Carval over at Reuters specifically. And they say, actually, I'll leave the picture up there for you. And I'll actually just read on screen here. They say, quote, Paper shelf price labels are going away at thousands of Walmart stores. The company said on Thursday announced an expansion of rollout digital shelf labels and will allow it to update prices on over 
120,000 items within minutes. That's astonishing. 120,000 items. Wow. They say weekly updates to paper shelf labels typically took a store worker about two days. With digital labels, prices can be updated within two minutes. After a few clicks, there's mobile app for workers called me at Walmart, the company said. Wow. Now they say there should be appear on all or 2,300 stores by 2026. This is according to Greg Cathy, Senior VP of Transformation and Innovation at Walmart, which operates 4,700 U.S. stores. Let me see here. Now, one of the biggest pushbacks from consumers is, is this going to be like Wendy's, which shot themselves in the foot when they started to have fluctuating pricing, where they said, well, depending on what time of day, we're going to charge you more or less for hamburger. Now, Walmart specifically says, again, this from directly from the headquarters, they say, quote, it's absolutely not going to be one hour the price is this, the next hour is that. Again, this is from Walmart, this during a Walmart annual shareholder meeting earlier last week. So it's not, that's not going to be the main point, point of contention, but I think for the average consumer, that's going to be the biggest concern they have is, well, are they going to change these prices, you know, by the, you know, right at the drop of a dime? No, this is just going to save them an astronomical amount of time, money, resources, and for the people who care about, you know, recycling the environment, well, these screens are probably, the screens is very similar to the technology that you had with the ebook readers. So it's not a bright, blaring OLED screen, you know, making you blind. It's much more of a passive sort of font as well as the, the e-ink that they use. And they look pretty attractive. I mean, now that I'm attracted to certain fonts, I mean, maybe suppose I am, but nevertheless, they look pretty good at the Walmart the Angoli next to me. Now, here's another close-up of one of those images, or rather some of the screens you can see. And they have different sizes all the way down to, looks like the smallest one is maybe two inches, eh, three inches by two inches for like the bubblegum ones. And then it goes all the way up to one that looks like traditional ebook size reader where I have seen those. And it is amazing to see them at the stores. I mean, even down to, because everything from the t-shirts to the bubblegum, it's all there. So it'd be fascinating to see maybe during the next shareholder meeting where they actually talk about the ROI. Because again, Whoever, whoever is a sales rep for this technology, let's just say they're probably, they're moving up, they're, they're driving a Cadillac. Well, I guess nowadays, I don't know how many people want those except me, which I would really want the Cadillac CTS 4 or V5 Blackwing. Because again, they come with a stick shift and it's great, awesome engineering. But nevertheless, that is a long sales cycle to convince Walmart to get these things. And yeah, imagine all the sensors, all, I was about to say sensors, all those screens for one store, multiply that by all those stores. That's going to be revolutionary. Now, it'll be interesting to see, do any competitors start to take this up as well? Again, the only time I've seen this in terms of a mass use case of this technology would be like Nebraska Furniture Mart. Now, let me know, have you ever seen this in the real world at your local food store or grocery store? Are you a fan of this? Do you have any preference at all? Let me know in the comments. As always, I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Other interesting business news, you have Marshalls and TJ Maxx to have their employees wear body cams in a futile attempt to decrease store theft. I say futile because, again, district attorneys, depending on where you live, probably won't do a thing anyway. Now, this was first brought to us thanks to um, and Jane Forbes, who, I mean, of all the places she could work, she works at USA Today. I mean, that, that is a silly name. Her name is Forbes. I mean, it's almost as silly as being named something like Topping. Oh, wait. I partially digress. I mean, it is kind of silly. She does not work at Forbes, but nevertheless, she says, quote, TJ Maxx's parent company wants to curb shoplifting with a police tactic body cameras. Now, TJ Maxx is a parent company behind TJ Maxx, Home Goods, and Marshalls, and now it'll be bringing them to crack down on theft. Now, it says that not every associate will be eligible to wear the body cam, but many will. They'll also say their, watch, their loss prevention team will be wearing them. And... Will this actually have any crackdown on crime? I mean, there is millions of, I mean, I think Target alone estimated to lose $400 million in theft during 2023. I mean, it's absolutely out of control. And yet, I don't think it'll actually do any good to have these cameras. Now they ask, you know, who can obtain this body camera footage? They say, you get the video from the cameras, you'll have to be a law enforcement officer or legal representative that is requesting with a subpoena. So in terms of privacy, it's good that, because again, some companies don't even act, they'll just acquiesce to anything, just a simple call. They're at least, at least saying they're not going to give the data out unless they are required legally with a subpoena. So at least they're not just like, going to hand out your data willy-nilly. No, again, we're not, they're just saying this in a, you know, stated ar did a article, it's not a contract with us or anything like that. But at least perhaps they've thought about that in terms of one of the hesitations consumers might have. Because again, a lot of people don't like to have cameras shoved in their faces most of the time. 
especially when they're just going to buy what is TJ Maxx sell? Shirts or t-shirts? I'm by no means a lexicon of fashion. I buy one thing and make it last decades. But nevertheless, they say they're going to crack down on you know, theft. It won't. That's just my three cents. It used to be two cents, but 40-year hyperinflation? Got to be three cents. I say that because we already have evidence of people stealing and nothing happens. The best use case, bar none, is San Francisco, which, again, you get what you vote for. They voted to make it no longer a felony to steal up to $950. So now it's treated as a misdemeanor in that area of California. And that means that the justice system, when in the rare occasion where they do actually prosecute crime, well, they play it down from misdemeanor down to basically nothing, rudimentary speaking. And we have instances where there's a CNN interviewer interviewing, oh, I was going to say re, word redundancies, but nevertheless, they're interviewing someone at a CVS or Walgreens, one of the two, and talking about shoplifting. During the interview, you get three people just go in and steal a bunch of stuff. No one did anything. They had a camera crew there. Nothing. I, it didn't deter these people one iota. A lot of people still have a hoodie or a mask on, so you're not going to see who they are. And I partially blame lawyers and insurance companies. The policy for main businesses is do not prosecute crime. Do not stop theft because they're worried about litigation, which again, if you're stealing something, all bets are off. If you're tripping, we've, we've become way too much of a litigious society and it's hurting businesses. It's hurting culture. It's hurting people. Because again, we're paying for it because we're paying for high prices. Well, not me. I'll pay for clothing except every 10 years, obviously, but it's hurting a lot of consumers. So they're saying, oh yeah, these cameras will fix it. Nope. We have a culture problem. And again, we have those subsequent issues that I talked about. So even with these cameras, I don't think it's going to change a darn thing. Again, these district attorneys, you also have a bunch of them who won't prosecute crime, depending on what, you know, what political side of the alley you are in some cases. So they say this is going to stop crime, but do you think it will? I mean, the only thing I could possibly conceivably think of in terms of an ROI or why they might be really doing this is perhaps this will lower their insurance premiums. Maybe. But I don't think it'll actually have a substantial effect on the rate of shoplifting. But let me know in the comments, as always. It'd be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Other interesting business news, you have Nissan to kill the gas engine investments. Rest in peace, Gunsy. Now, this is one of the worst business decisions I've heard of in a while. Time will tell if it is truly a business blunder, because Nissan only sells about 18 cars a year, probably won't affect them. Huh. That's an automotive pun because in terms of volume of sales, they are very much one of the smaller automotive manufacturers. Now, this article is first brought to us thanks to MotorOne.com, which, I was going to say, case in point, you know exactly what they're talking about. Now they say, quote, Nissan, Nissan has stopped spending money on new gas engines. It's all going into EVs, which, I don't know. Are they taking a leaf out of General Motors? No, even General Motors isn't this foolish. Even General Motors, which again, is like, General Motors has gone bankrupt three times since Billy Durant founded the company all those years ago by bringing together Oldsmobile as well as Buick. And even GM is investing hundreds of millions of dollars into their new V8 because they understand they make their money from trucks, SUVs, then what is now the Corvette, which is, yeah, it's a hybrid as well as an EV with options and no third pedal, just two pedals on that car. Also known as a manual transmission, an abomination to most automotive enthusiasts. Now, they're less with Nissan, Appropriately, they have a picture of the GTR, which, again, they haven't done much in terms of engineering in, I don't want to say a decade, but it's a little disappointing when every year the car just looks a little bit different, a business practice first started by General Motors. But the Nissan GTR is one of those legendary Godzilla vehicles. I mean, that's a nickname for it. I mean, a lot of horsepower, turbocharger, like, it's some marvel engineering, hand-built engine. And yet they still don't have a manual transmission, which to me, they're just leaving money on the table. Just adding manual transmission to the GTR I'm not saying you're going to double your sales, but it's not going to be, it's a not insignificant amount of sales you would increase. Because right now, the sale rate of that vehicle is also decreasing, much like most Nissans. doesn't help that they had those CBD transmissions for, you know, years and upon years, and they, you know, kept crumbling into nothing. Now, again, this is also foolish because the fastest growing automotive category right now in the United States, which is one of the largest markets for automobiles, is hybrids, which personally... I find abhorrent. I would never want one because I want a vehicle that lasts a long time and have three pedals. Much more fun. Now, for that as a consumer, though, that's where the market is mo moving, generally speaking. But Toyota is kind of vindicated when they invested so much research and development the past couple years into hybrids. They turned out to be absolutely right. Another good example of business aptitudes, General Motors makes one hybrid. And it's the Corvette. Which, 
no one's buying that because it's a hybrid. Now, this specifically was brought to us thanks to a writer at Motor1.com by the name of Adrian Padanu. He says, quote, Toyota Mazda Subaru recently announced they're joining forces to develop the next generation internal combustion engines. However, another Japanese automaker has taken a radically different approach by deciding to stop investing in gasoline and diesel power altogether. Nissan says it's pretty much done spending cash on new ICE technology. Which, I was going to say, they have one of their anemic V6s down below. You see one of their twin turbos with a, about 10 pounds of plastic on top of the cover. Yeah, have an automobile pun. I don't, I'm not a fan of having all that plastic just thrown on top. I know it does noise dampening, but I buy a car, I kind of want to hear the engine. But again, that's just me. Now, he mentioned that the transition from the conventional power cars to fully electric models will be done by Nissan's e-power technology. It's an unconventional hybrid setup where the, inter where the combustion engine acts as a genera generator to charge the battery. I mean, it's not too unconventional. General Motors did that over a decade ago with the Chevy, Chevy, or if you feel so fancy, the Chevrolet Volt, which is kind of funny. Nothing more American than a Frenchman, because Louis Chevrolet was a French race car driver that Billy really founded or started the business with. But nevertheless, they say that's going to be part of the, the lineup of the future. But again... I can't imagine this is a good idea. I mean, Nissan's already struggling and making a car that, again, the market's not accepting at the moment. I mean, maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe this is the best decision Nissan's ever made. They, I'm just going to say the bar's pretty low based on historicals of the company. But would you ever buy a Nissan in general and then an EV? Now, they, I'll give them credit. They were one of the most successful companies in terms of they had the Nissan Leaf, which was the butt of a lot of jokes, but was one of the first mass-produced EV vehicles, which I know EV vehicles kind of redundant, but nevertheless, they did do that. It was moderately successful. The aggressive price point, I gotta give them that credit as well. If you look at their overall sales, I mean, Nissan is kind of butt of so many jokes. I mean, BAE Energy, which is, I guess, short for Ultima Energy or something like that, there's whole Facebook groups just because it's, it's, so, it's, it's kind of a hilarious phenomenon. But I don't think that's going to help Nissan in the long term. Especially, again, when you see a lot of the profits are coming from hybrids, are coming from gas engines. So let me know, have you ever bought a Nissan or driven a Nissan? And do you think this is the right way for them to move in terms of the business direction? Let me know in the comments. As always, I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Now going over to the culture part of the podcast, you have Caitlin Clark off Team USA. The girl credited as being the second WNBA player in history for us to actually know their name. The first one being Brittany Griner, who is famously a drug addict who went to Russia with drugs and was arrested because drugs are illegal in Russia. Then we traded the Lord of War for her. Brittany Griner is also, in addition to being a drug user, is someone who doesn't stand for the American flag. She is so unpatriotic, she actually says how evil the U.S. is. And yet we traded the Lord of War, Victor Bout, who is a famous international arms dealer, but... I was going to say he didn't do any business in the U.S., but U.S. went after him, nevertheless. We had imprisoned him. We traded him for her. The worst trade in history, most people would say. And for decades, oh, forever, the WNBA has never made a profit. It's basically, that's a nice way of saying, uh, the NBA is basically the sugar daddy. The NBA helped found the WNBA. They're the, one of the largest investors in it. And every year they subsidize it. Someday they might make a profit. It's been 20 plus years, but... Actually, no, it's been longer than that. But again, maybe it's a long, long, long loss leader. I'm not saying no one tuned in, but about 18 people would tune into the WNBA. Now, Caitlin Clark, I'd be a little biased because she's an awesome Iowan, as we all Iowans are. Ah, obviously biased, I'm you know, from that area. But nevertheless, she's the only reason people talk about the WNBA in years. She's breaking records. She's got, she's classy. She's not talking smack, even though people are knocking over on the court, the basketball court. I'm not sure about her legal litigation anytime, anything in. I don't think she has any legal litigation at the moment, but nevertheless, she's been what many people consider a class act, bringing eyeballs to the TVs, and for a couple of the games that she's on, or that she's playing, there's been 5x the number of people attending the games. 5x, in some cases 10x, I, that's, astronom that's an astronomical growth rate. I've never seen a sport like that. And yet, they just decided, nah, Team USA, we're not going to have her. The only reason people are watching your sports balls game and you're saying no. And not, to, not only she's like not only she's popular, she's selling tickets and merchandise, which is again, you need to make a someday the NBA NBA, I was about to say they need to make a profit. Maybe the NBA would just be the sugar daddy forever. Fun intended, they seem to be, you know, the NBA's men. But nevertheless, they should try to try to strive to make a profit, right? And yet they're saying no to one of the most talented 
and one of the most well-received players. Now, one of the first folks to bring this up was Matt Wallace on X Twitter, and he says, quote, these five women who kept Clay and Clark off Team USA, I wonder why. And it just happened to be the five women were all African-American women. Now, Caitlin Clark is also a minority, not just being white in the WNBA, but she's also heterosexual, which I believe is 70 plus percent of the WNBA is LGBTI. But Caitlin Clark is a double minority, which one would think the mainstream media would love her for that, but in this case, not so much. Now, this post went pretty viral. It got 17.5 million views and 62,000 likes. Now, Throwing down one of the first ones is Gunther Eagleman saying they're envious of a white girl, getting 4.5 thousand likes. Throwing down here, more and more. Let's see, little memes. Oh, Caitlin Clark. This is what is that guy? The pizza guy, Dave Portnoy. Which, as all gentlemen should, he did suit up in this video, so we'll play that. All right, I'm at Saratoga Belmont Day, looking spectacular per usual. Shoes, bang. But this is about Caitlin Clark being... Fact check, the shoes aren't great. There's slip-ons, which I understand if you're at home, I'll wear slip-ons from time to time, but never mind. Left off the Olympic team. How dumb are these women? How Very. dumb? I don't know who's making the decision, women's Olympic committee, whatever it is. I don't care if you don't think Caitlin Clark talent-wise belongs on this team, even though she does put up 37 to 13, like the most points in the history of the league for a rookie. I don't, none of it matters. These women, and I love women. I'm a pro woman guy, women guy. They complain and they cry about equal rights, equal wages, blah, 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 wages, blah, 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 blah. Hey, dummies. For the first time, like in the history of basketball, you have arguably a player who is the most popular player in the world. But like you could argue right now, Caitlin Clark is the most talked about, discussed, most popular, most puts asses in the seats, single basketball player in the world. You could argue that. Yeah, you could say maybe LeBron, Luca, whatever you want, but you can argue it. And you leave her off the Olympics team, it's not only a showcase for her, it's for the sport and the other WNBA players who are on this team. How dumb, how brain dead, how idiotic do the people running this thing have to be? It was one thing after another with her. How I, I at the business part of my brain is like these people, and maybe it's a guy who did whoever it is. I don't ever want to hear you complain about flying commercial or not getting salaries or this, that. You're too dumb. They're also definitely way overpaid in the WNBA. They make way too much money. Because again, the league loses money, so they should be paid a lot less, actually. You're too dumb. You have a cash cow. This can bring the Olympic basketball, women's basketball, will be like the number one thing people watch with Caitlin Clark. As it is, I'd rather watch grass grow. I'd rather watch paint dry. I'd rather watch dirt just be moved around because Caitlin Clark's not on the team. If she's there, it's appointment TV. You people, whoever did this, honestly, hey, take your brain, put it in a museum, and study it for how dumb you are. Fact check, true. Yes, if I, that, that actually might be a good question in the comments. What would you rather do, watch paint dry or an average WNBA game? That's not even a tough call. The paint drying would be awesome. I did that as a kid once. I mean, you can watch it going from wet to dry. It's a long process, but that or watching grass grow, that would be infinitely more interesting than watching an average WNBA game. Not even a close comparison. And yet Clayton Clark, she actually knows how to get the ball into the hoop. And she's, and she's an awesome eye win. And yet they're saying, oh yeah, no, we don't want that. Josetto Curioso says, isn't it obvious that race is the main factor here? These... These are all women of color, and Caitlin Clark is Caucasian. This is a gif of a girl saying it's pretty black and white. Being 738 likes. Here. I got 1.8 thousand likes. So this was from Gorilla the Gorilla, saying Elon Musk sends Don Lemon to kindergarten. And he, Elon says, everyone was a slave. Everyone, we are all descended from slaves. It's just a question of when. Was it more recent or less recent? That's it. I got 1.8 thousand likes. Ian Jager says Caitlin Clark deserves to be on the team, getting 583 likes. EK says they're envious at the same time. They're jealous because she's white and she's an incredible basketball player, getting 331 likes. She's also classy. She gets knocked down and people are talking a lot of smack about her, as you might say. She seems to just focus on the game. Again, I forget which famous sports ball's coach was, but as a kid, my uncle would always reference this famous football coach. 
And the, they would ask the coach, like, hey, I like competitors talking smack about you. They're saying you suck. And anytime that happened, the coach would just turn around. One thing goes, this point, it goes, scoreboard. Scoreboard. True. Focus on what you can control. Going down more and more. Let's see. Mega1775 says, they made the mistake of taking orders from their white liberal masters. Even Malcolm X said the white liberal is the worst enemy of America and the worst enemy of the black man. Gained 164 likes. Let's see. The biggest says, damn near half the team is white, though. Nice try, y'all. Wait, y'all girl just ain't making the cut. So this person said, though, T-H-O. I don't want to say it's a, a red flag for mentally vacuous, but, eh. Let me pull up that roster. What? Looks like there's only, wait, two white gals? The Bri Again, uh, yeah, Brittany, Gr they probably chose Brittany Griner? Well, I guess it is. LGBT month, but Brittany Griner? Really? The perpetual drug user that hates America is representing America at the sports ball, Olymp women's sports ball Olympic thing, Magic. Who's in charge of marketing? Terrible. I got 822 likes. Matthew J. Show says appears racism played a prominent role in the discussion, gained 128 likes. Let's see here. Scroll down more and more. Oh, it's got to be more contrarian statements. But here we go. Have Almighty says, you people always play the race victim card. America's a mediocrity, right? 166 likes, but I mean, not really. If it was truly mediocrity, the WNBA players would get like $13 in a ham sandwich that they would themselves have to create. Because again, the WNBA for decades has lost money. Players are way overpaid. See, scroll down more and more. One bad dude says white privilege strikes again, getting 285 likes. Let's see. Viral Vibe says, here's who kept wait, here's who kept Kate Clark, the highest scoring women's player in college basketball history, off team USA. What made what motivated their decision? It's a picture of those five gals again. Yeah, who would uh, yeah, why why do you ever want the highest highest scorer in history? Who could possibly benefit from that? Yeah. So again, another bad call from the WNBA. Or women's sports balls, but again, that's not new. That's kind of the status quo. But again, there's a lot of people saying that Caitlin Clark could, could do what Tiger Woods did for you know golf for years. A couple of people cared golf about golf, and the passionate guys loved it. But I mean, Tiger Woods is a legend. He made golf cool. Like even my friends who barely knew golf, we all knew Tiger Woods. I mean, he perfected hitting white ball into hole. Which obviously you can tell how much I know about sports balls, but there are a lot of people saying Clinton Clark do the same for the WNBA and even someday get to the point where they maybe make a profit. I know it's a tall order because there's so many, so many business and aptitudes in that organization, but let me know in the comments. Do you think she should be on Team USA? Do you plan on watching the Team USA game? I mean, I certainly won't for sure now, but yeah, let me know in the comments. As always, I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Other interesting cultural news, you have California AutoZone robbed by a mob as the cultural decay continues in the great, is what I'm told, the great state of California. Ha, huh, that's a joke because it used to be called the California dream, but more likely and more accurately these days, it seems to be a nightmare. And again, I think one of the biggest issues, especially with this, is that they decided to make stealing or theft no longer a felony. They kicked that down to a misdemeanor, which again, the public justice system on average is a volume business. So they would much rather people take plea deals as opposed to going to court, court and actually finding it out. And that's why, and you also have these district attorneys who don't prosecute certain crimes. So it just fuels this decay. Now, this is brought to us thanks to End Wokeness, which he says, quote, Last night in Los Angeles, $11,000 stolen. 50 plus looter, only one arrest. Wow. And I can't believe the thing with California, that, per that one person will probably be let go without bail. Almost immediately. Went pretty viral, got half a million views and 11,000 likes. So about 53 seconds, so we'll go ahead and watch this little video of these morally, mentally vacuous people stealing from a great establishment like AutoZone. Not not paid endorsement, but definitely a fan. Wish they're headquartered in the great country, or some might say the great state of Texas. 99% sure they're headquartered in Tennessee. Oh, wow, they got the door open. They have a mob of people. 
So breaking down the little futile metal drill that goes over the windows in AutoZone, there's a mob of people. And they're also breaking through the back door of the store, just taking to steal even more. Where the police again? Oh yeah, doing nothing. Where's the store manager? Of course Damn. the store manager prosecuted. I ain't got nothing to say, really. <laughs> what can I say? But again, people have thought, their, if they thought it people have their smartphones, they're taking videos. Again, I don't think that going back to the TJ Maxx Marshall's thing, I don't think having cameras is gonna do anything. It was, if they thought it was gonna be hot. Well it is gonna be hot now. Fascinating, they never steal work boots. But they are this one guy is stealing a jack. So obviously you can use that for illegitimate reasons as well, like mo a gang tool in life, really. Hey look, it's a Mercedes. Oh. Can't help but notice all these men have something in common. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll go ahead and I'll say it. Mostly sweaters, not a single suit. Not a single man was suited up in that. And let's be honest, these aren't true gentlemen or men. They're more likely mentally, they're boys. So legally speaking, they're adults. Not a single suit there. Not be glass-eyed or rosy, you know, rose-tinted glasses. But back in the day, all men of all, you know, any, many men, we'd all suit up. And yet, ever since fewer and fewer men are suiting up, the cultural decay has continued. Is that a direct cause? Is correlation always the same as causation? No, not necessarily. But never can't with notice. I never see a lot of guys in suits going after and robbing these stores. And yet again, these are the, the same people who excuse this disgusting behavior will be the same ones who say, oh, why are these businesses leaving this area? Why would they leave? Why would they close down the store? Because they're losing, because they're going to go out of business, they say there. And again, people think retail is so profitable. It's usually not that great, especially for a mass product in this case. It's very much a volume business. You're making a little bit of profit, and you're making a lot of profit in the aggregate over all of it. So again, I'm not sure how long it's going to take for this store to recover. They lost $11,000 of inventory. And then, of course, they're going to have damages to the store as well. And then you have to worry about, well, will an employee really want to work here if this is what it's going to be? Can't help but notice the Korean, the infamous Korean shop during the LA riots, their store was passed by. The mobsters didn't, the mob did not attack their store. They're on the rooftop with guns. Prime example of what can be accomplished with a good guy with a gun. And no, I'm not advocating you should, you know, use that firearm in, illegally in any way for the YouTube record. Also, a friendly reminder to click that subscribe button and go to alternative media where you can, or censorship is less, less of a thing, like the big green one. But nevertheless, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe everyone in the comments is going to give these gentlemen, again, not gentlemen, these pieces of crap, and look at accolades or something. I mean, probably not, but let's dive in the comments. When well, the first one comes from Paul Zuzupa saying, I'm surprised there's was even one arrest, probably a store worker who called the police. Got 599 likes. He also said, this is Gavin Newsom's California, getting 152 likes, which, again, I, I think there's a high propensity that Gavin Newsom could be the Democratic nominee for president. Because, again, Biden's getting older and older. There's a lot of rumors are just going to wheel someone out to replace him. And Gavin Newsom, a lot of ladies like him because he's handsome and they vote. I can't imagine if anyone has modicum of intelligence, business-wise or economy-wise or culture-wise, why they would vote for him. But again, he gets reelected all the time in California. Be quite horrifying to see that on a national level. Brother Eagleman says two tier justice getting 144 likes. Elon Musk simply said exclamation point getting 2.2 thousand likes. Liberal Cat Media TM says this, and it's a sign that says no one, and I mean no one, has done more harm to Americans than Democrats. Unquote getting 234 likes. Throwing down more and more, you have Rand Dumb Libs saying the new blue state welcome sign is a picture that has been, well, has a lot of bullet holes that says caution, Democrat run city, and enter at your own risk. Getting 181 likes. And of course, there's a lot of garbage over there in a little comic strip. That, or this little, not a comic, it's just a single cell of a comic. Not a GIF either. The name eludes me at the moment. Just picture. Nevertheless, I'm sorry to not fact check. Chicago is a great place to go visit. San Francisco is great. It's not, it's not at all filled with crap, phys, physical crap and corruption. Oh, wait, they absolutely are. Nevertheless, going down more and more. Let's see. General TM says they can track down one of the January 6th Patriots, but they can't track down criminals. I'm cooking 444 likes, which, yeah, this is uh, definitely a lack of will to prosecute certain things. Jayana says Gucci 100% discount, and as, again, people in hoodies, 
stealing from a Gucci store. And security and no one's really stopping them. Imagine if you could legally protect your store and your goods. Again, in a lot of states, even Texas, you aren't legally allowed to protect your property with use of force. So if someone comes onto your property and they steal like a lawnmower, you're not supposed to use force to stop them. If you feel your life is danger, which is again the importance of the standard law grounds, only then are you allowed to. And again, depending on what judge you get, you're gonna have to prove that beyond a re there's a high burden of proof. So again, imagine if they change the law on a federal level to all states where you could use deadly force to protect your property. Now, but think society will get a little bit better, but that's just me. I got 52 likes. Gail Afar says this is what happens when places are defunded. We'll see this in San Francisco, LA, and it will continue unless big changes are making. 29 likes. Text Trad says only one arrest was Trump getting 52, or sorry, 15 likes. H Part of Trooper Brady says, I just want bread for my family's AOC gave 103 likes. Most rudimentary argument ever. And it's not even good moral argument, because again, you don't steal that. The most disgusting thing ever public school has ever brainwashed children with. This happened in my area in the Midwest. They brainwash kids to think the end justifies the means, which means you can justify anything, the most horrific things, as long as the end is. Which, I feel like those are the famous last words of every evil perpetrator in history. Let's see, scrolling down more and more. Lucky Bullocker says, not one valid driver's license in sight, 56 likes. Two more. Glenda says, what else can you expect from California? They've decriminalized crime. Your repercussions, California is now a state to do business and getting 39 likes. And Again, they didn't decriminalize it. They basically just slap people on the wrist now. Because again, it used to be a felony to see up to nine hundred fifty dollars is now a misdemeanor. So they just pushed it down more and more. And depending on what district attorneys you get, Lord knows they use it, don't prosecute crime. Well, in terms of theft and you know, but nevertheless. Let's see. So not a lot of contrarian statements here. And there you go. <laughs> Kevin Cassidy says, "Thank God California banned plastic straws." Says a picture of. All the trash and homelessness. Getting 49 likes. Which, yeah. Virtue signaling at their peak. Well, the most hilarious thing is in Oregon, they legalized pretty much all drugs, but they banned plastic straws. Fascinating. But you get what you vote for, and I'm sure there's a couple of people happy still living there. I don't know why they would be, but nevertheless. I don't think California's going to turn around anytime soon. But let me know, do you think... I mean, are these businesses just going to leave in droves? What options do they have? Do you think they'll just spend copious amounts of security, which, depending on what district, depending on the situation, might do more harm than good, fiscally speaking? Let me know in the comments. As always, I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Now, going over to the political part podcast, you have Kamala Harris beat Trump once again. Well, that tweet is, well, completely ratioed. But she does have pictures of her with people smiling. I'm not sure if there's a red dot on them um, with a sniper, but nevertheless, there are people actually smiling. Now, this is brought to us straight from the horse's mouth, or donkey's mouth, because she's Democrat. Now, she says, quote, We beat Donald Trump once, we're going to beat him again. With your voice and power, we will win this November. And there's a picture of her. Not allowed to, well, I guess there's, I was going to say not a lot of diversity. There's one guy who's uh, white, but everyone else is African American. I thought, she, I thought she was a champion of diversity, but nevertheless. Well, actually, she's, I think she's, her family's from India, actually, but in Jamaica, but nevertheless. At least, many, at least the men in this picture all suited up. So I can at least say they're gentlemen, even if we don't agree with them on many of the political ideologies. And it went pretty viral. A lot of people saw this. 1.3 million people saw this. And 22,000 people did like it. So we should see a lot of comments giving her accolades saying, oh, yes, we will beat him again. You are, we appreciate, thank you for fixing the border, Kamala. That was a Biden, a Biden silent to you. And, you know, you're doing a great job. Oh, that's a joke because the border is, once again, you know, no, it's completely broken. Now, scrolling down, again, let's say she has pictures of she's hanging out with some chefs or some cooks. Let's see here. Is that a Texan? No, no, for, for a New York minute, I thought it was a hat, a baseball hat with a Texas sporting balls team. But it looks like there's a P on the hat, which indicates probably some other sports balls teams I quite frankly can't name. I was going to say. In Texas, a lot of people argue Texas is moving purple in terms of the people moving here. And crazier things have happened. At one time, California was a red state. It would be fast. That'd be fascinating to see in our lifetime if the states actually flip. I'm not sure what the Las Vegas odds are, but if you import enough people, you can make drastic changes as well. Going down more and more. Let's see what the comments are. The first one comes from Keith Aloha. So, again, first one is someone who's supporting her. 
She wasn't completely ratioed, but well, mostly, yeah, spoiler alert, mostly was. So Keith, Aloha, has palm trees in his name, and he does pay for Twitter Blue. Now, he says, vote Democrat in 2024. It will be the last time you can. Now, I don't know about that. My grandpa died decades ago, and he's been voting Democrat ever since. You know, it's funny because, yeah, a lot of dead people vote Democrat. But nevertheless, he says, you know, LGBTQ animal lover, pro-choice, gun reform, expand SCOTUS, no MAGA, and never Trump. So he's a radical. Again, want to expand the Supreme Court so they can stack it in their favor. For decades, it's been re leaning left. Now there's a modicum of people that are leaning... I would say constitutional people on the Supreme Court. Now they're freaking out. Now, Geek Aloha says, Madam VP, let me make a correction for you. Convicted felon Donald Trump, that's much better. Laugh emoji. And it says, no, of course, it says, no one else is above the law, except, you know, the Biden family and all Democrats. But again, that did get 13 likes. Not to brag, but my one video last month got 18 likes. As you might say, it went pretty viral, which is again a friendly, friendly reminder. To take the one one thousandth of a second to like this video. If we, I feel like we can get more people to like this highlight or this episode than people who liked Mr. Keith Aloha. Now, scrolling down more and more, you have right is still right says, okay, border failure. And someone complained about the border. It got 1.2 thousand likes. BW9009 says, love this. They will hop him up on amphetamines, just like last time. Trump called for a drug test prior to the debate, said he's still winning, willing, getting 31 likes. Let's see here. So those are actually responses to Keith. It's like Point Break says nothing is built, nothing is built, nothing is back, nothing is better. And it says instead of build back better, how about just put things the way you found them and leave us the hell alone? Got 3.9 thousand likes. Going down more and more. Hi, I'm Kelly Joe. Says, have you heard of what's happening in Europe today? Patriots are fed up with progressive policies, especially open borders, and we're really we're reclaiming what belongs to citizens. Getting 3.5 thousand likes. Ellen Hodge says conservatives rocketed the vote across Europe, getting 73 likes. My Angel says bring your ballot mules. It says there's a juxtaposition of two pictures. One is 2017 when your president was elected, quote unquote. And it's a picture of Donald Trump surrounded by his wife Melania. The Secret Service says countless people cheering in the background. It says brightness in America, Trump states. It says juxtapose the picture of the Capitol with the police and the fences. It says 2021 when the president is selected by the Democratic Party and their computers. Getting, that got 1.8 thousand likes. American Papa Bear says you cheated once. You'll try to cheat again. Cheat again. We're too big to rig this time. Getting 5.1 thousand likes and an A plus for a word pun because rhyming is cool. And again, there's a politics and moves on political chessboard. Trump should be making t-shirts and hats with that, I was about to say, logo, trademark, whatever you want to call it. We're too big to rig. Because again, in politics, short, concise messaging is what wins. I mean, that's one of the reasons why Obama is so, so, so successful. Also helps he was articulate speaker, but I mean, hope and change those short little phrases. It's perfect. Trump had to make America great again. So it'd yeah, be fascinating to see what is the best, what's the most effective political messaging this time around. When again, there are so many issues we are working on or are hurting people. Ben J. Benjamin Button says, "How Kamala Harris beat him the first time?" And it's a picture of, oh yeah, this when they put up the, the poster board so you couldn't see the votes being counted. And it says this is what 81 million votes look like. It got 3.9 thousand likes. Let's see, it's going down more and more. Mike Engel Engelman says stolen elections have consequences, getting 2.4 thousand likes. Liz Churchill says you cheated, that's treason, getting 2.3 thousand likes. Hollywood Resistance says the entire world is rejecting you, commie loons, America will too. And yeah, yeah Trump pushing up a wave and says, Cultural Marxism, socialism, open borders, climate change. And there's Mr. Schwab, his globalism. And got 114 likes. Now, <laughs> is this is a little, yeah, turning point USA, a little meme of theirs. E Jert says cheated and the world knows it. And this guy and the girl about to kiss. And she says lie to me. He says Biden won. Getting 466 likes. One more. Alan Jacoby says donate here to save America. It's Donald Trump's URL. It says mean tweets, world peace. Got 714 likes, which, again, I have a lot of my friends who voted for Trump just because there's a dramatic decrease in world conflict. Even, like, a lot of my, uh, pejoratively called them hippie, a lot of my hippie friends voted for Trump just for that one reason alone. He, he brought peace to the Middle East. Like, a seemingly impossible task. Yet, Trump and his son-in-law did it. Which is a huge feat. 
I'm still shocked he didn't get the Nobel. Well, I guess we shouldn't be because a lot of the world hates Trump. But of all the things where someone should have won the Nobel Peace Prize or given more accolades, that's a pretty magnanimous achievement. Now, again, with Kamala Harris, uh, what is she running on? Again, Biden gave her a lot of things to work on. She's supposed to be in charge of regulating AI and most famously, the border. And she also doesn't speak well. People think I speak bad. And let's be honest. I definitely ask my faux pas. I, I definitely mess up. I, there are late days where I speak too fast. I used to be lower monotone thanks to the comments. I know it's something I need to work on. And truth be told, I stutter and I struggle at words at times. I have a theory. The more people subscribe, the better I get. Just another friendly reason to help heal that theory. And click that, click that button. See, right there. You need another person to help subscribe and click that. And yet with Kamala, I mean, she's awkward at speaking. She's um, mentally and morally vacuous. She bragged about doing drugs while at the same time putting people in jail for doing drugs. So she's a hypocrite as well. And again, Biden gave her a couple tasks and she couldn't uh, give me that list of articulated things that she has accomplished. That's what I want. I haven't found that list yet. And in terms of marketing, I can't but think Biden and Kamala are just going to focus 110% on everything quote-unquote evil Trump because what has she accomplished? Like, just being as unbiased as possible, well, I'm trying to think of like one or two bullet points where she's done good. And I struggle to even think of one. With Biden, you could argue that he did some good making sure that the, was it, the railroad union didn't go on additional strike that would have caused even you know, higher prices, bigger supply chain disruptions. And again, a lot of people don't agree with the methodology where he just caved in and gave them a bunch of money for doing nothing as unions usually do. But again, Biden has one or two bullet points or his administration or his team, you could argue. Even if you don't like the guy, again, I think most of his policies have actually hurt us both business and culturally wise. What is Kamala running on? And again, Biden also illegally hired her in terms of he said he was going to hire someone based on their gender and race, which is illegal and immoral. But let me know in the comments. Again, there are people allegedly, I don't think it was a big, I don't think it was an AI or doctor picture. There's a, there's that picture of people who are smiling and happy with Kamala. And let me know, do you have anyone in your group of friends who is a Kamala Harris fan? And what do you, again, let me know in the comments, what do you think are her accomplishments and is it going to help or hurt Biden this time around? As always, I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Other interesting political news, you have Biden posting a clip of Trump and getting damn near completely ratioed, as usual. Now, this comes from straight from Biden, or more accurately, most likely as the White House Press Secretary, G. Karine Jean-Pierre, which is a silly name, Pierre. Or it might as well be Pear, which is ridiculous. Almost as ridiculous as, like, topping. But I digress. But nevertheless, there's been multiple times where the Biden account would tweet something in her point of view or her perspective so it's really just her doing it for him. but nevertheless allegedly Biden said I approve this message it's a clip of Trump which Trump has always suited up as all men should and let's see what Trump has to say and a spoiler alert is take out of context which just helps fuel people like Trump more and more because again they're just showing it just shows how much they mean to be late the data against him but nevertheless it's only about 10 seconds long and this is what this is what Biden posted and Trump has his iconic red hat, make America great again. Because I don't want anybody going on me. We need every voter. I don't care about you. I just want your vote. I don't care. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. He has a lot of teeth. So it ends with a picture of Biden, which, at least for marketing-wise, that's a good picture of Biden. It's hard to find those these days. But he's smiling with, again, really white, straight teeth. I'm not sure how much work he's had. Truth be told, I could probably use some. And, man, he's got his signature aviation glasses. Interestingly enough, he has the American flag lapel pin, which you don't see that a lot in politics these days. And he's preparing some type of folder, which probably tells him which reporters he's allowed to call on and which ones will ask him questions in advance, which, that's not even a joke, it's happened multiple times. And it says, you know, paid for Biden for president. And what pretty about, oh, got 4.1 million views and 59,000 likes. So that's a lot of likes. We should see many comments giving him accolades saying, I agree with you, Dark Brandon, which, interestingly enough, is the most popular nickname for him for people who support him, which... At least he's kind of leaning into the meme. Now, scrolling down with the first one, and, oh no, they're mostly negative. Now, first one comes from Gunther Eagleman saying, quote, you also proved the sh well, I was going to say, um, probably apologies in advance for pretty earmuffs on, so to say, if you have children listening, because this is not a child appropriate comment. However, it is factual, so I'll go ahead and say it. Excuse me. Gunther Eagleman says, quote, you also prove of showers to their daughter. No one takes you seriously. The world is laughing at you. Getting, quote, unquote, got 7,000 likes, which, remember we were told we had to vote for Biden just to win respect to the world globe, which who gives a 
darn. Yeah, the, the world does not respect America, especially now. Paul Zupa saying the Biden campaign loves taking video out of context. Well, here's Joe Biden in, in context of talking about black voters. He's racist. He just, uh, he says so himself right here. This is the infamous clip of him. I believe this is Charlemagne. It's a silly name, but nevertheless. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. But I tell yeah. And yet, that went viral in terms of a lot of Republican voters know this clip, and a couple of my friends in the middle know this clip, but yeah. If Trump did this, he'd be a quote-unquote canceled in a New York minute. Yet, Biden has said multiple racial, multiple negative racial things, and they'll still vote for him. That got 2.8 thousand likes. Joe Mooney says, hey Joe, we all want to vote you out of office November 5th, so yeah, we approve this message too. This is fire Biden getting 31 likes here. Now Sarah Rose posted the full clip. So she says, here's a full clip, disingenuous POS. And it's only about 15 seconds long. And truth be told, Trump's voice is infinitely better than mine. So of course, I'll go ahead and play that here. By the way, isn't that breeze nice? Do you feel the breeze? Because I don't want anybody going on me. We need every voter. I don't care about you. I just want your vote. I don't care. See, now the, the press will take that and they'll say he said a horrible thing. By the way, just proving his point again and again and again. That got 9.3. Let's make. Oh, uh, oh yes, I was finally did that for weeks. It finally did happen in real time. I was the additional vote needed to get or like needed to get to 9.4 thousand likes. It's overdue, but it finally needed to happen. Going down more and more. Joey Mariano says, "Hey Joe, you again your must for the children. You took advantage of your daughter in the shower. Don't ever speak publicly again." Getting 2.4 thousand likes, which is referencing the daughter's her actual. I was about to say autobiography, her diary came out and has proved to be true. And she's, she's been quoted as saying she probably took inappropriate showers with her father. Yeah, it's a messed up family, which I think kind of shows when you look at the activities of Hunter. I can't but imagine what his life was growing up. Granted, they had all the money in the world. But yeah, no. Yeah, I can't help but think what that was like. Stark Tank says, may I suggest a new campaign poster? And it's Biden Harris that says, not overly concerned about sharks. Got 324 likes. TB says, thank you for not... Oh, finally, we do... Oh, geez Louise, we did find a contrarian statement. Not a lot, but here's another Biden supporter. CB, who's no, whose username is Conserve Blue, who decide, describes himself as an ex-GOP veteran, AP alumni, BJJ Blue Belt, will follow all Never Trump Republicans done with Nikki. So at least I do agree with him in terms of done with Nikki. She's, I can't think of many policies I agree with her on. But nevertheless, he says, quote, thank you for not being for not being a convicted criminal and having a probation officer, Mr. President, so refreshing, unquote. Now, the joke, well, Biden just hasn't been convicted, but he's actually committed more crimes than Trump. But nevertheless, that got 909 likes. Now, did he get ratioed? We click on who responded to him. One of the first ones comes from Midman Outdoors saying, history will not be kind to those who defend actions of tyrants. You will come to regret your words one day, one, unquote. I got 127 likes. TB says you will, and it got 12 likes. So nearly completely ratioed, but again, 909 people did agree with CB's statement. Um, John T. Gomez says America approves of, approves of tra President Trump getting 388 likes. Let's see. Livercat Media TM says, why don't you play the full clip where he said that the media and propagandists will take out what he said and say, look, Trump said he doesn't care about you, just your vote. He said, well, son of a bitch. You're doing the exact same thing he said you'd do. Unquote. 863 likes, which, yeah, I mean, they're just, just proving Trump's point. Let's see here. Gizmo says, America approves messages. Biden looking at a mirror says, Biden confront, confronts America's worst enemy. In 2.5 thousand likes. Let's see. E. Gert says, you lie, then lie again. Corrupt fraud is three pictures of Biden throughout his political career. It says, five decades of fraud, 50 years of failure. Getting 638 likes, which, man, half, 50 years working in politics? Jeez. Wow. At least he did wear a suit the whole time, so. At least he did something right. Again, he was very proud of his, like, it's ironic, one of the, his accomplishments that I think a lot of people on the left and the right appreciated him with his tough on crime bill. Was it the 90s or the 80s? And yet, he says that's the one thing he's embarrassed about now. Like, one of his, what a lot of people consider to be one of his biggest accomplishments, he's now not so much. He's, he's, he's now ashamed of that fact. It's kind of ironic. Do one more. America, uh, Bro Coin Nation says America approves this message. This was done by... 
Oh, okay, that's just a commercial. That's where the reporter asks, like, you know, you, a lot of people are saying Trump is a political prisoner. Why would you do this to him? And Biden just turns and smiles really creepily, getting 100, I got 100, 107 likes. Wait, oh, yeah, we got, we finally found another contrarian statement. There are only a couple. But nevertheless, Mario, Ukraine flag, what is it? European Union flag. What is this? A white and red flag. And then he does have the American flag, interestingly enough. He describes himself as anti commie Nazi and cults. Oh, that's rich. Says supply, supply chain, pro NATO tech AI. Nevertheless, he says dark branding strikes again. And is Joe Biden putting on glasses and says hashtag deal with it? In 248 likes. 25 people responded to him. What did they say? Oh, he did not actually get ratioed by anyone in the comments. I mean, everyone in the comments did, you know, say negative things about him, but the number, number of likes did not get that ratioed. The Skywalker says, who else is voting for a felon? It says, I'm voting for outlaw. It's Trump with the cowboy hat. In 209 likes. Hmm. So, yeah, that clip kind of backfired on him. Although, it did, again, he did get people, a couple of people who are already supporting Biden to give him accolades on there. Wait a minute. But, yeah, in terms of, is this helping him move, is this a good move on the political chessboard? I mean, again, it did get a couple of his fans excited. And I'm sure this messaging will work for a couple of folks in the middle who, again, don't see the full clip. But as soon as someone finds out that the clip was doctored, or sorry, more accurately, it was taken out of context, or it was clipped out without the full context given, well, spoiler alert, it's not going to be great. It's, I can't help but think, well, that's just going to prove Trump right, because Trump said you were going to do this to make him look bad, and you did. So I don't think this is a good move on the political chessboard for Biden. If, again, I think I think his team is just going to focus more and more on the quote unquote the convicted felon shtick or angle. I think that's going to be the main marketing point that they're going to use for this upcoming election. They certainly can't brag about the economy. They certainly can't brag about the border or crime. Their only hope is to get some people as mad as possible to Trump or just, you know, put them in jail. It'll be interesting to see which methodology they use going forth and how much people in the middle are affected by this. And let me know in the comments, do you think this is a good clip? Is it going to help Biden? Because again, I mean, some of these clips are going viral. In this case, mainly negative, but let me know in the comments. As always, I would be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Now, going over to the business blunder of the day, you have Kia. Well, they recall about 460,000 of their vehicles for uh, fire risk, which is, yeah, not good, uh, Kia. Now, this is brought to us thanks to Gabe and Anaji over at USA Today, in which they say, quote, Kia issues park outside recall for over 460,000 Telluride vehicles due to fire risk, which, I don't know, I don't want to say f for marketing, but that's a funny name for a vehicle. Tell you ride. Oh, it's kind of like the car's going to you, give you a demand. Tell you ride. If I don't want to. If I don't want to walk, get some, you know, burn some calories. But nevertheless, going down more and more. And actually, I'll try to find, I'll close that pop up. Well, there you just kind of see, uh, oh, that's a Kia. How did I have a picture of this thing? They say, quote, he has issued a park outside recall for 40, 462, 889 model year 2020 to 2024 tell you ride vehicles because of a risk of the vehicle catching fire while parked or driving. According to the notice from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the front power seat motor may overheat due, due to a stuck power seat slide knob, which can cause the vehicle to catch fire. The vehicle affects certain vehicles manufactured January 9th, 2019 to May 29th, 2024. The automaker is advising drivers to park outside away from structures until the recall repair is complete. Dealers will install a bracket for this power seat switch which covers and replaces the back slide knobs free of charge, according to NHTSA. The owner notification letters are expected to be mailed by July 30th, 2024, or just tune into this show, since it seems to be half the business blunders are automotive related. And they say owners may contact Kia customer service at 1-800-333-4542. And if you want to call Kia, you can call them at 1-800-333-4532. And then the recall number for this is S is in Sam, C is in Cat, 316. Again, SC316 is the recall number, or you can call, Lord, of, Lord <laughs> heaven forbid, if you want to actually call the government and wait for their hotline, you can call the NHTSA safety at 188-327-4236, which I can't mention the whole time for that government entity, but 
nevertheless, I can't imagine. Again, I'm not a fan of power seats. I think they're mainly a scam and useless. Well, oh, I also like going to the tracks. So it's mostly dead weight getting those power the motors for those things. It's one of those things where you use once when you buy the car and you really never use again. Let, the only exception you can possibly conceive of is if, unfortunately, you have a situation where you have multiple people driving the same vehicle. Then you might make sense to have magical memory seats. Even then, I mean, I'm trying to think. I don't, maybe I'm biased because I never owned a vehicle with those. But even if I had one of those types of vehicles, I kind of think I'd probably just rip them out. Get rid of that weight, car can go a little bit faster, a little better fuel economy. It's actually interesting because, again, one of the biggest issues with cars is, you know, how to get them to make better fuel economy. And one of the best, easiest ways is just to decrease the weight. Every 1% weight you can decrease is about 1% increase in fuel economy. And yet they still have these giant, heavy power seats, which, again, no one really uses. The fact that it could cause a fire, that's just pathetically ridiculous. It's even more inconvenient because now you have to park it outside. Now, I'm also not seeing this article in ETA for when you're going to get that replacement bracket manufactured. Because, again, they have to manufacture it, ship it out to the dealerships, and then subsequently they'll install it. And depending on the complexity of this to install, your vehicle might be out of production for you know an hour, a day, a week, or longer. So, and depending on your dealership, you may or may not have an opportunity for a loan vehicle, in which case you have to worry about maybe your insurance will or not cover it, cover it being getting a rental. So, again, like every recall, it, it is free. It doesn't cost the consumer anything, but the dealerships are not happy because recall will work. Again, the fact the parent company, the manufacturer, pays the dealerships for these types of things is called warranty work. And... As well as issues where well, warranty and recall work, but the pay rate is much lower than if they were to upsell the customer on a different type of usual service that is not covered under a warranty. So the dealerships aren't really happy about this either. Again, it also chisels away that at the brand, which I mean, he has come a long way. They used to be a joke. I mean, Jay Leno used to compare them to the reliability of a bobsled being tossed down a hill in the 90s. Now they have come a long way. They had one of the best warranties for years. I think it was like a 10 year, 10,000 mile powertrain warranty. Back when I was in the automobile committee, which again was unparalleled, that was great. And yet now you have these instances where again it's almost half a million vehicles being recalled. So they didn't properly do a QA or quality assurance for a power seat module, and it could cause it to burst into flames. So you literally just have an excessive vehicle just sitting in your driveway now, which is ridiculous to say the least. So I gotta say, Kia having this type of recall affects nearly half a million of your SUVs. That is certainly the business blunder of the day. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to tune in. Again, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, leave a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe, fight the good fight.